Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back. Uh, thanks to uh, Tim, my esteemed journalist colleague uh, and MEF advisor, and uh, many thanks to our launch partners, .go, for sponsoring that session, bringing together some uh, some great discussion there. Thank you. Um, as you'll see, uh, it's uh, that time of the afternoon, actually, for tea. For those of you who were around this morning, you'll have seen me with a coffee in my hand. Um, so it's coffee for the first half of the day. Now we've got uh, the next few sessions to get through, and, and then we're going to close this amazing day three of our three-day MechConnect business messaging event. I've been sort of sitting here um, wondering what to talk about and really where to start in terms of trying to capture, you know, not only what's happened on the last three days, but today alone, you know, some of the uh, data that the Mobile Squared guys came up with this morning, incredibly interesting stuff. And if you're interested in this market and you're looking for your business case uh, around messaging or your brand interested in exactly what it can do for you, um, you know, those are the guys to really go and speak to. Um, I really enjoyed speaking to Catherine again um, from Engage about the Oxfam initiative, um, and hopefully we're going to have some more news about uh, uh, a charity initiative from within MEF um, that hopefully we can incorporate with uh, with Catherine and her team. Um, what else have we had? Um, really enjoyed my conversation with Virginie um, of GMS. I love the the amount of detail she went into about the product and how. She really, uh, how their team had to handhold the brands and enterprises to to get them to embrace the technology and to understand it. Um, <clears throat> I think a couple of people have made the point today that it's very easy for us within the industry to sort of sit back and expect people to, you know, understand. You know, it's not it's not our fault. It's just the way it is. It's a very complicated ecosystem both from a technical and a commercial perspective and therefore we need to try and develop a new language if we're going to embrace um, not embrace but engage brands you know on a footing that they can understand and that's something that certainly there are initiatives in the works uh, at MEF to try and make that happen over the coming months so anyone who has any Ideas around that, whether you're a MEF member or not, please get in touch with us to discuss. We'd, we'd really welcome your input. Um, talking about membership, um, if any of you out there aren't members of MEF, and I can't believe there are that many of you, surely, um, please, um, it, it, I think today and this week has really been an indication of what happens at MEF. We bring people together to talk, discuss, and to drive action in our industry. You know, from the backroom guys who've delivered this amazing event, very slick production, I'm sure you'd all agree, to Dario interviewing CEOs from, you know, amazing companies doing amazing work in our industry, to each of the people who've been out and, uh, and taken the time to engage in our little event um, and the sessions within it. Um, I hope you'd agree there's been some amazing content here. And for MEF members, uh, then uh, obviously the videos and presentations are, I believe, going to be available next week. We'd love to have them for you tomorrow, but we're a small team, so it's going to take a little, a little while to get that done. But all of your support is really appreciated. Um, if you are interested in membership, and let's face it, why wouldn't you be? Um, please reach out to either myself, Ian at mobileecosystemforum.com, or any of our, our team members. You can uh, go in via the app. I think everyone is in there under the speaker list. Um, and uh, so I think we've uh, about hit the time for our next session. Uh, and I have my my good friends and uh, launch partner sponsors from Mexico City, Cubas. Um, uh, Alejandra, um, I believe that you're in the green room somewhere waiting to come in, is that right? Hi, it's Antonor. Hi. How are you, my friend? Great to see you. Um, yeah. How's things with you? Everything is okay. We are very anxious to start. Um, right. So, uh, yeah. of course, I will shut up now and go, and I'll leave you to your session. Um, I hope it's really productive. I'll see you on the other end. Perfect. Thanks. Hello, everybody. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here to talk about 
business messages, uh, how this kind of service can improve your operation, your communication, and your customer experience with your final users. All of these following the best practices in the industry. First of all, I want to thank the people who are joining us. And of course, our, our panel, uh, Ordaz, Antonio, Nev, and Prem, thanks for your time. Thanks for, your, for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Um, please, uh, hello, uh, hello, Ordaz. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfect. Could okay. you introduce yourself, please? Pardon? Yes, could you introduce yourself, please? Yes, sure. Yes, hello, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Antonio Dax, Head of Messaging and Customer Engagement with Telefonica Global Solutions, formerly known as Telefonica International Tools and Services. I'm responsible of the business development of the traditional messaging, P2P, A2P, and anti fraud solutions, but also responsible of this uh, expecting evolution of the SMS to the digital messaging. Okay, so that's my role in Telefonica. Thank you very much. And the next participant is Antonio Aguilar. Hello, Antonio. How are you? Fine. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead with your introduce. Thank you. I am Antonio Aguilar from Mexico City. Um, I'm the director of uh, BD Consulting. It's a consulting firm. Um, I have a, a bachelor's degree in IT, and I have a specialization in data science and uh, analytics from MIT. Perfect. Thank you very much. And our next participant is Ned. Hi, guys. Hi, Antonio. Thanks for the, the invitation. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm Neb Kovacevic. I'm the, the founder and CEO of Kiban. So we offer a cloud solution to the credit industry in uh, Latin America, and we are a cloud partner of uh, Cubas here. Thank you very much for your, your assistance. And the last but not the least important, Prem. I don't know if maybe Prem have problems with the connection. Okay, perfect. And with, with in the team from Cubas, uh, Alejandra, please, could you introduce? Hi, everyone. This is Alejandra from Cubas Mobile. I'm also in the sales enterprise team with Antenor. And it's my pleasure to be here with you. Perfect. Well, we are ready to start. And please, Alejandra, uh, could you move to the first topic, please? Yeah, of course. So let's get into details. We all want to know why Cuba's mobile services are important in your industry. So can you help me, Antonio? Yes, um, Cuba's mobile is important for in the systems industry like uh, ERP or CRM because it enhances contact and communication with customers for various objectives such as customer experience, marketing, sales, operations, to name some uh, applications. Yeah, you're totally right. Or Dax, do you have a feeling on this? Uh, yes, for Telefonica Global Solutions, uh, Cubas is one of our main customers in, in Mexico for A2P messaging. Uh, Telefonica terminates uh, several hundred million of messages per month with high quality standards and therefore fully committed with the goals of our customers. So being Cubas, one of our main customers in, in Mexico, we are fully aligned with, with their goals and we support them to, to achieve their, their targets. Totally, Nev. Well, in, in the sector that uh, uh, that we work, the financial and especially the onboard credit onboarding industry, uh, the, the the fact of having uh, you know rapid, uh, quick and secure SMS delivery uh, was one of the most important things that we looked for a partner, and that's how we we started working with Cubas and uh, never been deceived. People are amazed uh, how how fast and and the high uh, delivery rate that we have. So this is why we, we love working with you guys. Yes, I agree with Ned. According with your answer from QS, it's really important to provide a reliable service in order to help you do successful processes and without them being concerned if the message has been, has been received or not. Uh, it, it's simple. Our target is to provide a reliable platform 
from your business? Yeah, totally. Um, we have seen a lot of new products for business messaging. So what is your vision in the messaging industry? Or Dax, I think you have a better idea in this question. Yes, a Telefonica vision is, is built in two pillars. Uh, first one, in the short, in the, in the medium term, is focus in the battle against fraud. Uh, this is a trending topic in all discussions in the MEF, but uh, we believe that uh, this will be also a trending topic in the evolution of SMS to QRCS. Yes. So this is our main focus in the, in the short term, as I said. In the medium, in the long term, we believe that the, the evolution of the traditional channels to more digital ones is our vision. It could be RCS. Uh, Telefonica has bet for, for, for that technology, but uh, we, we want to approach to our customers in a non challenge solution. So we are exploring different alternatives. This is our vision. Thank you. Nev, do you have a feeling? We can hear you. You're muted, Nev. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, the, no, the, 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 the most heard <laughs> sentence in the world this year and last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I believe that even though it's evolving and we see other services, you know, uh, the main messaging services are, are meant to stay. Uh, as, as we discussed a lot of times with Antenor, uh, even though you are evolving, even though we have a lot of things, uh, Mexico and Latam is still uh, you know, uh, a pretty traditional uh, uh, industry, you know, and, and, and part of the world, so where uh, SMS works a lot. So I don't know, I think that the introduction of new services uh, uh, are, are going to be a big thing in the following years, but still we can rely on the, on the classic ones and they work very well. Yeah, mm, I, I according with, with the, the only to complement the in my opinion, the customer is the key for the enterprises. They are pushing companies to select different channels of communication, such as RCS, uh, WhatsApp business, and of course, following, uh, following using SMS. Um, I think that the companies need to be alert to listen to their customers and take action about your channels of communication. It's my, I, I think uh, Latin, who, Latin is very, are moving for other other kind of, of service inside to to business messages. I I think I think that. Yeah, Antonio, what is your vision in the messaging industry? As uh, you mentioned, um, business messaging is, is has the potential to change the way the consumers interact with the brands in the coming years. As uh, Antenor mentioned, the, the customer sees the focus, you know, enterprise and brands will allocate and invest in digital marketing to communicate and engage with the customers. The consistent market opportunity for mobile operator, operators uh, make will uh, easy access to adopt and monetize business messaging. Monetize is, is, is the important word in this case. Yeah. Yeah. So incredibly, according to a study, texts have a 99% open rate. And it is reported that 95% of the texts are read within three minutes. So knowing this, how does this service could monetize your business? For example, SMS, RCS, or verified SMS? Um, there are a num um, um, different um, ways to monetize the messaging investment. Uh, for example, um, we can expand our value of the company we can um, uh, integrate with the enterprise offerings and enhance customer experience, reducing the customer support cost and overall improving customer satisfaction. Uh, the, the, um, the ROI opportunity is, is critical in this case, and messaging is a great opportunity to reduce and monetize. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. How do you think you can monetize the service? Relax, and you are you here? Yes, pardon, I was in mute. Yes, a Telefonica foresees to two streams to, to monetize the, the messaging opportunity. Uh, first one, uh, Telefonica wants to be a relevant player in the wholesale messaging market, being the half of Telefonica Group. This is our native role as wholesalers. 
But the second one, Telefonica is developing a service called Business Connect. Okay, Business Connect is, in, is a, an omnichannel platform to deliver the right message to the right channel, the subscribers, to the users. Could be using SMS, RCS, email, WhatsApp, or whatever. So we are working on that. This is uh, how we want to monetize this opportunity. Uh, we have defined the yeah. and we are working to have more during this uh, 2021. Okay. Actually, we have a question from Jose Garcia. Here's the question. I think you will be the great to answer, Dax. Um, what has been what has been the key drivers for the RCS success in Mexico? I guess that the, the, the first one is that uh, the, the, the adoption of the technology has been quite uh, fast if you compare, for example, with another country. So this is something that is uh, speeding up the, the usage of the of the service. Also, uh, I guess that the, there is a, a lot of uh, companies that are used to promote their services through campaigns via SMS. So for, for them, it's quite straightforward to change the mindset and moving from the traditional SMS to, to RCS. So I, I guess that, that those have been the, the, the two drivers to speed up the adoption in, in Mexico. Yeah, um, Nev, I think you can also have a very good perspective in this question from Jose. You're on mute. When monetization for us is, uh, you know, be tricky, uh, it, it can't be direct, but uh, the, 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 the delivery rate uh, gives, you know, great strengths to uh, the, the, the customer relation. Uh, it avoids friction. And for example, when we do uh, an onboarding for a loan, uh, it helps us, you know, verify uh, the sale. It helps us verify the account. And so it helped us, you know, uh, bring a better experience. So it's not direct, it would be indirect. But of course, uh, I think every one of us has had once uh, the, the, the case that you, you're expecting a, 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 an SMS, you know, or a message to, to close, you know, the account or to open it, and it doesn't arrive. So uh, I think that this is the main uh, advantage that we have with you, and, and it has worked and it helps us, you know, uh, bring better financial services to the customer. Now you are in mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So um, what I was saying is that I'm going to make a tricky question because there are two different services, but sometimes they're used for the same purposes. So here it goes. What advantage do you see in SMS over push notifications from an app? Well, uh, if you want, I can, yeah, I can take that one if you want. Uh, for me, it's very easy because, um, uh, especially in Mexico, I have the data, but you have a, a, a huge part of the of the uh, of the population uh, not bankerized. Uh, so uh, it usually comes with the fact that they don't have, you know, a smartphone or they have a very uh, uh, low-end smartphone. So also the push notifications uh, usually are associated to having an app. So it's a, a huge maintenance for the companies. With an SMS, even though you have a last generation uh, uh, smartphone, or a, a regular cell phone, it's very easy to get to the customer. So we always, uh, on, on Kiban side, we always prefer SMS to, to push uh, because we know that uh, we don't have, you know, to, to, to take the burden on the customer in order to receive, you know, the information. Uh, it's on us with the SMS. Yeah. Um, Antonio Aguilar, I think you can also complement this question. You're in mute. I'm agree with, with Ned. I only need to, to add um, the um, push notification required as a smartphone and all, and not all your customers has an, an, an smartphone, you know? And this is a, a, a big difference. Only for compliment the, the Ned comment. Yeah, I also think so too. 
Um, we have another question from Dusan Stankovic. Uh, here it goes. Talking about Mexico, I'd like to ask, how do you all see the future development of business messaging in the next three to five years in overall Latin America region, especially with 5G stepping up in the game? Antonio Ordax, I think you have a good idea, uh, especially with the 5G stepping up in the game. You're in mute. Uh, yes, I, I guess that an um, aggregator like Cubas uh, could play a key role in the adoption of RCS. Uh, Cubas uh, has a very good approach to the customers and can promote and get the buy-in of the technology. So I guess that the, the role that aggregators can play in this market is, is crucial. And let me say that also uh, the, the, the rollout of the 5G could, could uh, speed up that, but I, I guess that uh, even that uh, the 5G could uh, be delayed based on the economic situation, I guess that the adoption of the, of the RCS uh, will, will be a, a reality in, in Latin in the, in the short term. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Nev, do you have something to complement Dusan's question? Um, yeah, I, th I think that um, and Antenor won't and, and, and the others, uh, maybe you won't make me make me lie, but usually uh, since uh, things tend to go slowly in, in LATAM, you know, changing. So I think that for the years to come, we will still have, you know, uh, uh, an SMS dominated market. That's what I believe. But then all of a sudden it booms and, uh, you know, uh, having more and more messaging via maybe uh, uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, or the new platform that we're going to have, uh, it, it won't be something uh, that surprised me. Unfortunately, even though there are great plans for 5G, I know that there are not a lot of uh, uh, still development on the ground, so I think it's going to take some years. Um, so what, what I do believe that is always going to be slow, and then it's going to be a boom, uh, like we've seen. Uh, uh, in, 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 in the previous years, for example, in my sector, the fintech, you know, uh, the origination 100% uh, 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 online. So this is what I think for the messaging industry, except if Antenor disagrees and I'll be kind uh, and I'll be glad to have the, 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 the discussion right now. You're in mute. Yeah, yeah, I think the LATAM is very important for this for this kind of service. As me, as Neb said, we need to the we, our, our labor is uh, help the companies, help companies like Ibank, like Debe Consulting, to to improve your campaigns, to be uh, got got the best uh, experience with their customers, and we are for for help help you for for this for this. Uh, we are we are here for listen your 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 listen what kind of business you you need to to make and we are for help. Actually, Antenor, now that you're talking, we have another question from Jose Garcia, and he's asking, yeah. what yes. role has an aggregator like Cubas played in the RCS rollout? Well. Good question. We are partners from Google and we have the knowledge on the platform to help the companies to send your campaigns to serve. Uh, we, we can help the companies to send your campaigns step by step and help to obtain uh, a success result. A success result. Yeah, I agree with you. OK, so let's go a little bit more technical. What has been your experience with integrating our services? Antonio? Uh, yes, um, in my experience, the integration has been very smooth, you know. Um, the develop development of business flows and the integration is very easy with, with the platform of Cubas. You can integrate with your uh, systems the totally um, potential of Cubas platform and Google support for as uh, for boost your uh, campaigns of marketing or uh, sales whatever 
you know, it's very, very smooth, the integration on Cubas. The API's integration is very fast. Yeah, it's very friendly. Um, Nev, what have you been experiencing within the, with the integrating our services into your platform? I, I, I don't have a lot of things to say. It was very easy, uh, very smooth. We, we did it very quickly and um we we don't uh, there's not a lot of maintenance it, it always works so basically a, a five star integration <laughs> um so i'm i want to complement this question with uh what are the factors that you consider to integrate messaging solutions like cubas within your solution um well uh, I, I i used to joke about it with the antenna so when we when we first uh, went to search for an uh, SMS partner. Uh, uh, we tried several ones. It was in 2016 or 17, and I'm still waiting for some SMS to arrive. So this was the key factor. So how, how long uh, 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 we waited to receive the SMS successfully, and Cubas was on the top of the list. It was as easy as that. Yes, maybe it sounds funny, but when you are making business, it is it really, it is not funny. <laughs> you need no, a... no, it, it, it's, it's not funny because w one of the main uh, uh, features that we provide with the SMS is the authorization to check the credit bureaus in Mexico. Yeah. So basically you have a customer in front of you and you're telling him, I will send you an SMS with a, with a four digit uh, number and you have to give it back to me. And so when the customer uh, doesn't receive the SMS, even though I agree with Antenor, it seems funny. It's not funny. It can be the longest minute or two minutes of your life because uh, with that is also judging your technology. So this is why uh, we, 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 we made a lot of tests uh, uh, and uh, we saw that Cubas uh, was always, you know, very quick and we always use it during demos, you know, to see how, to prove how efficient it can be to have uh, a, a digital uh, uh, an online process. Yeah. Completely agree. <laughs> yeah, is the uh, I said is 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 simply our target: provide the best platform and the best service with quality. And the companies have a lot of concerns about your business, but Cubat it is not your concern. Um, or Dax. So being a huge operator such as Telefonica, you have a big role to promote good practices in the industry. So what are those good practices you need to apply to clients who do not want to receive notifications? Sorry, I was in mute. Uh, bear in mind that Telefonica is also a mobile operator. It's a master uh, for that our customers and aggregators stick to what the regulators are requesting about notifications in terms of opt-in and opt-out requests, respect of social hours, and so on. There is a huge regulation that should be respected by, by all. In this regard, I guess, I, it's fair, I, I should highlight that the Mobile Ecosystem Forum has made an extraordinary effort to promote best practices that many aggregators and so we recall that Cubas is following that, are already following. Okay, so this is how we are trying to convince and to force to our customers that they should stick to what regulators are asking and also try to convince them that we should manage the SMS in a fair way. Otherwise, people is going to complain and going to hate this service that we believe that uh, has a huge opportunity for the next years. Yeah, Nev, uh, can you complement this question? What are those good practices that you apply? Um, well, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if uh, if I can, you know, directly answer to that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, we basically what what we're trying to do, you know, is to I will I will I will say it more in my in my sector. It's not so, as much as good practices is. What we're trying to do is to try to use best, you know, the solution that you provide in, in the key moments of, 
uh, an onboarding in the credit environment. So for example, when you try to verify that it is the customer, when you need an authorization, when you give him the answer about uh, the, the, the loan being granted or not. So uh, th this is what we've seen in the industry being the key moments where you should, you know, immediately try and communicate with the customer. And this is where we are trying to use the, the solution best and it works perfectly. Yeah, thank you. Antonio Aguilar, do you have an answer in this? Only for complement the net comments, uh, you need to explain to the customers, the, explain the value of receiving messaging, for example, promotions or alerts for improvement, uh, whatever uh, topic of your business. But you need to explain the value, you need to, to, to go with the customer, explain in a deep way the benefits to receive this uh, messaging. Yeah, exactly. You need to uh, get your clients to want the service. So yeah, right. I totally agree. Um, we have another question from Felipe Castillo, and I think it's really interesting. He said, yeah. I'm gonna um, uh, say it. Some countries in Latin America have so many gray roots and sim farms. Regulators sometimes limit MNOs in fraud fighting. What do you think MNOs and aggregators could do to face this problem, considering many MNOs have a slow RCS deployment? Okay, let me go first. Uh, if the aggregator uh, are using uh, gray route, our quality of service is doesn't exist. Uh, QS uh, in never can use gray gray routes because we 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 have um, value or value of the, of our customers is really important if we try to do this, this kind of service first we can first cubas don't have a direct connection with the operators with the mnos it's impossible to have a direct connection when they are using this kind of, of service and if you are searching a uh, aggregator with quality, only you need to search aggregators like Cubax don't have any any roots any great roots. Is my opinion. I don't know if or does will uh, complain the, the the question. Yes, uh, in fact, I already mentioned that previously. It's one of our main concerns. No, as of operators, we are suffering that. So. Uh, we believe that uh, we need to, to put in value the quality of the routes. I mean, if we want to have quality services, we need to direct routes, avoid the, 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 the gray routes. Uh, this is, uh, choosing those gray routes, it's almost impossible to have a, a two a second factor of authentication or one-time passwords in, a, in real time. So I think that this is something that we need to, to put in value and convince our customers that they should use direct routes. In parallel, I guess that we need to, to push to the regulators to, to explain and convince them that in some cases, the rules that they are in the market are promoting this kind of uh, bad practice. So this is something that we are doing, trying to engage with the regulators to, to, to facilitate the way that we deploy solutions that avoid that. Because for sure it's not a, it's something that is in some way illegal and destroy the market. Uh, we are seeing that uh, years the price is decreasing from one year to, any, to, to a year, and this is something that we cannot afford in the long term. Okay, so this is what we need to do just to avoid that. Complementing uh, Felipe's question, do you believe that the MEF SMS registry supporting UK banks and brands would be of interest or use in Mexico? I think Antenor can give you can give us a, very, a better. Yes, uh, we are work. Uh, actually, we are working with companies from fintechs from United United Kingdom. I don't know exactly the the meaning of the and the question, but yes, we have uh, companies uh, working with Cubas uh, from United Kingdom and with presence in Europe and Latin America. 
Yeah. And they, and they are using, of course, SMS, A2P message, and in some cases, verified SMS. They're complementing their, your, their, their campaigns with verified SMS. Okay, um, we have another question from Jose Garcia, and he says, Mexico SMS termination costs remain underpriced compared to countries like Ecuador and Argentina. Any ambitions to increase prices? Yes, yes, I, I should say that uh, yes, but uh, in order to do that, we need to, to ensure that we are able to close all the gray routes. Otherwise, uh, we can try to increase the price in the market, but if there is gray routes, for sure that uh, the bad guys will find a, a way to, to, to deliver the messages. So yes, we, we are keen to increase price and to, to, to put the right price in the market, but we need to be sure that uh, all the gray routes are closed, which is something that we are working also. The Mexico. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna go a little bit back. Uh, just to be clear, that SMS registry is a MEF initiative that helps banks and brands fight fraud in SMS. So that was what we were talking, and that's where the confusion was. But all, all said, um, we have another question. And it's why the percentage of RCS subscribers is so low for Mexico. Only 15% if Google by Android messages is providing RCS solution there. With so many Android handset, it should be much higher. Um, I can go ahead and answer this question. Uh, we've seen that RCS are not getting to all the Androids because there is, there is the phone needs to be in the newer, newer, newest version. So it has to be lollipop or higher. So that's why probably if you have an Android and you're not getting it, it's because you have to configure it, your, your cell phone, or probably if you have Samsung, they come with a, with a Samsung messaging app. So you have to put the normal SMS so you can get them an RCS. I don't know if anyone has something to complement this question with. Yes. Um, the, for RCS, the issue is how many, how many devices the companies can reach. And we, in, in our experience, we, the companies, when launch a campaign with RCS, can uh, maybe 30 or 40 percent for your database is rich with the RCS. Uh, and it's important this data because it's growing. Perfect. Um, so I would like to close with the last question that is focused to Cuba. So from Cuba's perspective, what is the future of RCS in Mexico and how much it has grown? And the Nora. Uh, yes, we, we have only five minutes for for the finish, and I think the, the in market in Mexico are growing uh, in, in Latin and need to listen to the customers. In my opinion, it's very important to listen to the customers because they are pushing to, uh, to they are pushing the companies to to take other channels from communications. Is my opinion. Yeah, totally. I don't know if any of you guys, Nev or Dax or Antonio, would like to add something so we can wrap this up. Well, uh, on, on my side, I can tell you that uh, the, the the messaging uh, industry is going. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to play a bigger and bigger role uh, in in the in the credit financial industry in the years to come. So with the wave of fintechs, uh, we've seen dozens of fintechs uh, launching in Mexico and LATAM in the, in the past years, uh, offering 100%, uh, you know, online services, no offices. So I do believe the messaging e e e uh, for onboarding or for customer, uh, you know, man maintenance relationship yeah, is going to get stronger and stronger and that we're going to use more and more services. Uh, even though, as I mentioned before, it's a slow start, I believe yeah, it will become 
the messaging uh, industry will become a, a huge partner of the credit industry. Antonio um, Ordax. Yes, uh, we believe that uh, RCS uh, will be the future. We are uh, putting a lot of effort just to promote it uh, to evangelize our customers. So we expect that uh, during this year, but for sure next year, will be the year of uh, RCS. Okay, um, finally, um, thanks for the invitation for, for uh, this uh, event. Thank you, Cubas and MF. Yeah, and um, we see in BD, BD Consulting uh, a great opportunity to, to increase our uh, revenue with the integration of Cuba services with the, our customers. Uh, in the, the integration in the CRM and ERP system for my company is very important because it's a, a, a great expectation with the customers, like um, increase uh, contact with the customers, right? Um, thank you again. You're welcome. And uh, thank you, Ras, uh, Antonio, Nev. Thanks for your time, for your availability. And I don't know how many time we, we have. Ah, Jan, perfect. <laughs> I'm, I'm back uh, just at the right time, hopefully. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you uh, to Antonio and Alejandra from Cubas for supporting MathConnect again. And Neb and the two Antonios, thank you very much for uh, taking part. A really great session. I know there's some terrific stuff happening there in Mexico for RCS. I particularly loved Neb's story about the four-year delivery time from one of Cubas's competitors. Perhaps they should join MEF you think that might be uh, might be useful but um, thank you very much for uh, for sharing your experiences with us uh, and we look forward to seeing you i think at our next event antonor and alejandra when you're sponsoring the next uh, rcs roundtable for latin america which we're yeah. really looking forward to and thank you ever so much for your support so thank you very much guys from london to mexico city take care thank you very much bye-bye